So I'm Kevin Snowden from Savix Limited and it's 10 years ago that I started work um, looking at the land use issues around Lake Taupo. Lake Taupo is a large beautiful lake very important to local people to local Māori and it's affected by predominantly farming activity and increased productivity which means essentially urine patches being laid down and uh, that nitrogen ending up in the lake. It is clear that the lake water quality is affected by that and we were looking at land use change um, that is commercially viable and large scale to uh, address that issue. So in 2003 we were looking at, at what things we could do to land, for land use change. It was in 2004 that we started seriously thinking about short rotation crop willow. The entities that, that drove that idea include Biojul, a New Zealand based company with a, a high tech hardwood technology. We used a lot of knowledge from IEA Task 30 and learnt a lot from them. That allowed us to screen options for land use change that were large scale and worthwhile doing. And it was in 2004 that we established our first trial using basic knowledge, uh, some willows derived from a, a private nursery in New Zealand and we established two species um, as best we could. So what we're setting out to do today with this video is to capture our knowledge and to summarise things uh, for other people to understand the role that willows can play in New Zealand in this catchment but further afield as well. In 2004 we established our first trial of short rotation willow in New Zealand. It was supported by New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, as I recall Lake Taupo Protection Trust who have a strong interest in seeking viable land use options for the Taupo catchment. And in reality, we are also strongly supported by Māori Trusts. This site is owned by Hohongaroa 2C Incorporation, one of many Māori landowners in the catchment. There were others who supported us, including Tauhara North, a private sort of family trust owned by Stephen Asher, Tanaihi Wanahu, and in Rotorua Whangapanako Incorporation. All of these trusts essentially provided land because they wanted to see sustainable and commercially viable land use. The trial was established actually by prisoners from a local prison. We didn't get it perfect but you can see behind me, around me, the success that we had with growing willows in this catchment. We have great rainfall, 1500 mil per annum. It's evenly spread, it allows great summer growth. Uh, there are about 70 frosts per annum, they don't really affect uh, these these, these trees, even though many of them are out of season, we get frosts right through the, the 12 months of the year at times. The soils are not strong by New Zealand standards. Uh, they're, they're based on a massive uh, volcanic activity about 1800 years ago. Um, and yet we get great growth rates. In 2005, at another site, northern end of the lake, we established with support from Sustainable Farming Fund on Tahara North land a large uh, complex trial. In that trial we established about eight different species including eucalypt using planting rates uh, set by IEA Task 30. We had three different cultivation um, methods including non-cultivated and, and we also established different cutting lengths for each of those um, species particularly the willow and poplar that we established. That trial was in quite a dry site, um, but it was still very successful, very meaningful in terms of learning a lot about how to grow willows in New Zealand. So the trial at uh, Rotokawa was very successful. We learnt that cultivation isn't actually important in these very friable soils, but we know that in order to plant mechanically, we will need to cultivate. We learnt that cutting lengths are not that important and so we established I think from 16 centimetres through to 30 centimetre lengths in those trials. All were successful. We learnt that there are very few pests and diseases affecting our willows in this climate. We also learnt that the shrub willows, Viminalis, Schwerinii and purpurea are healthier than the tree willows in that setting. 
and we had problems establishing eucalypts because of frost and so they are not successful for us in this setting. We were supported in that work by Plant and Food and their program and also Scion Research who provided a, a great deal of support in terms of measurement and, and the skills to do that and undertake um, good science. So this trial became very important to us in terms of being a higher productivity site uh, that reflects good rainfall and, and good growing conditions. We have measured here uh, productivity at age three, as I recall, and then coming back to measure two years growth, three years growth, and one year growth. In each case, we found our productivity to be averaging 16 to 17 oven dried tonnes per annum for our lowest uh, growing species, the Viminalis behind me, and slightly higher for uh, Schwerinii, um, which is also on the site. So that is very uh, good productivity, and yet we know that these clones were not uh, purposeful grown for productivity. They were grown for harsh sites um, in remedial work around riverbanks. So this trial has, has also been used for deploying some new clones that we've bred. We've trialled uh, weed control uh, using different um, weed control sprays at different rates. And so we've learned a lot from the site. It's been very, very important to Salix Limited and to the future activity of short rotation willow in New Zealand. Salix Swarinii uh, grows very quickly in the site. It is not so much a shrub uh, or, or a, you know, a really fine shrub with about three or four stems there. And so if we, if we do use it as a crop, we're going to have to harvest the, this in, in two or three year cycles at, at, at the absolute maximum. But it does grow very vigorously. Uh, it's particularly healthy. There is no rust uh, evident or any uh, pests that we've seen on these, the species. The reason that I think that we ended up choosing willow as opposed to other alternative uh, short rotation crop species and genus is that willow is just so cheap to establish. What I'm holding in my hand is a, is a typical willow wand that can be planted mechanically, about 20 centimetre stakes, cut into lengths, the length of my, my hand span there, and therefore this stem alone has eight to 10 cuttings Yes, it's planted intensively, very unlike typical forestry. What's so important about uh, short rotation crops is that you can harvest this material at about the third of the cost uh, of, of harvesting even small trees. And that makes such a difference to what is essentially a low value biomass. We think that uh, farmers in this, in this catchment will, on good contour land, admittedly, will make more money than traditional sheep and beef farming from owning and, and growing a crop of willow. Yes, the technologies to convert that into high value are still coming, but the world needs this, and uh, we believe that this is, is the premier crop for that target market. Work has been done in Europe, in Sweden, and also by SUNY, and, and I want to acknowledge uh, their input to what we've done. We've, we've taken what they've done and applied it in New Zealand. Larry Averson and Tim Volk have been very important. Larry has visited the site and uh, has been very important. This is not just our knowledge, it's other people that we've um, so valued. So in Sweden, there are 15 to 20,000 hectares of short rotation willow growing, producing, and, and being a commercially viable crop. In other places like England, uh, we believe there's 5,000 hectares. And once again, they've been used, and we can use them as proof that this can be a viable landowner crop. Salix Limited is the key entity driving short rotation crop willow in New Zealand. It's a, basically two partners, one of which is Paradise Quarry up in Whangarei, and they have uh, 15 hectares of willow on their land. And we have another site at the southern end of the lake, uh, leased from a Maori entity. Salix Limited 
would love to be selling more willow. Um, I guess our, our key targets right now are wastewater treatment, where we're working with URS and a uh, environmental engineer, Peter Gearing there, who have technology for subsurface drip irrigation, but they're always looking for plants that will take up water and take up nutrients and deliver a clean, sustainable solution for wastewater treatment. We hope to apply that to particularly urban wastewater, industrial wastewater, and maybe one day even uh, farm waste that would help make farming more sustainable in New Zealand. Last decade, Plant and Food actually undertook a trial of short rotation crop willow at the end of a wastewater treatment for a dairy shed. In that they discovered some really key and interesting uh, outputs. First of all, willow was up, able to take up to 400 kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year, really addressing a key issue in all sorts of situations. That's because the willow was growing so quick in those conditions with added water and added nutrient. And 26 oven dried tonnes per hectare was achieved in that trial. Really want to acknowledge Plant and Food uh, doing that work. In 2005, Biojul, which owned the nursery at the time, uh, began a breeding program and we've successfully deployed uh, about 20 clones now, which have been screened, and we know that they already that they are outperforming the Viminalis that, that I'm standing beside. So one day we hope to have even faster growing willows for New Zealand. So those clones uh, are owned by Salix Limited, and we hope to uh, deploy them into the nursery in the next year or two. Trials by Plant and Food and Ag Research have proven that short rotation willow successfully treat the worms in animals such as sheep, thereby reducing the need for antibiotics uh, on farms. 10 years seems a long time to have been trialling willow. What I can say is that in the right sites, we've proven that willows grow very successfully in New Zealand. We've proven the techniques required to grow them successfully. We've proven to ourselves that we can grow them. The challenge from this point is to find the markets for the produce to incentivise landowners to grow them. The technology to do that is underway, but not fully proven. Certainly for biomass, this is a, a useful addition to the, the biomass landscape. It could be burnt but there are probably cheaper options for New Zealand with its large forest estate. I hope and will continue to work towards making willow a viable large-scale crop in the right parts of New Zealand. And Salix Limited is in a position to drive that. There is no doubt that in, in my mind, having the right market would mean that we could do and deploy large-scale crops of willow in Taupo and help protect the lake from nitrogen leaching. And that is where this project started.